Hi, this video is designed as a step-by-step -step guide on how to transcend the ego so you can minimize and maybe even eliminate suffering from your life so you can have a really effing awesome great life. Pretty cool stuff, huh? I am Brett Michael Phillips. I'm the founder and creator of the Awakening Dynamic System of Energy Healing and Higher Consciousness. And we're here with video number three of seven in our series on transcending the ego. In the first video, we gave you a definition of what the ego is, exactly what it is, and what it means to transcend it. In video number two, which I'm hoping you just watched, we covered the big picture on why we think our life sucks. Why do we struggle? Why do we suffer? Why can't we feel wonderful about what's happening in our lives? In this video, I'm going to give you more very specific step-by-step -step guidance on how to do that. And so quite simply, most of us have an unhealthy relationship to our ego. We're letting it drive when it really should be a passenger. And how do we get past that? Well, first thing I want you to know is there's kind of two parts to this. The first part is, what is our relationship to the processes we apply in life, the actions we take? So if you want to, say, find a girlfriend or boyfriend, what is your process? Are you going to start exercising to look better? Are you going to go on an online dating site? Are you going to buy new clothes? Are you going to start going to singles meetups? So part of this is how do we be in healthy relationship to the ego in terms of our actions or process? The second part of it, which we'll cover in the next video, is how do we be in a healthy relationship to the results? What happens? But for right now, we're going to focus on the process. And so is there such a thing as a healthy ego? Absolutely. The ego is not wrong. The ego is not bad. The ego is not the enemy. It cannot be destroyed. You can try. And this is where I disagree with a lot of other spiritual teachers. I think it's a gigantic mistake to demonize the ego. And so I'll ask you right now, go down into the comments. I'm curious, what have other teachers or programs taught you about the ego? Is it something to be destroyed or gotten rid of or beaten into submission or perhaps treated gently and with love and integrated into your experience of life? So go ahead. Let me know in the comments. It's my goal to personally answer every comment on all of my videos. And while you're down there, hit like, hit subscribe. Much appreciated. Awesome. So the first part of this is to recognize there is such a thing as a healthy relationship to your ego. And so what would that be? Well, quite simply, we are designed to have egos. And they have things they like. And they have things they don't like. The relationship to the healthy ego is quite simple. Allow yourself to have your desires and your fears. Allow yourself to have things you want and things you don't want. That is quite healthy. And so we're designed this way because if we didn't have an ego, if nothing mattered to us, life would be kind of boring, uninspired. It's sort of like if you're watching sports and you have a team you love, you can get really into the game, right? It's really exciting when you win. And oh, it's so disappointing when they lose. And as much as I'm a huge sports fan, if I watch some random game between two teams I don't care about, I generally don't get too into it. I'm like, eh, kind of boring, right? Just so you know, that's why the divine gave us an ego to make life interesting. The trouble is we let the ego take over and decide if our life is good or bad, if we should be happy or sad, that kind of thing, right? So to have a healthy ego is pretty simple. First, recognize that we all have an ego. We all have things we like and don't like. We all have things we're attracted to and things we're repulsed by. For example, some people love kimchi. Some people can't stand it. Some people love sushi. Others can't stand it. Some people love going to a baseball game or the ballet. Others hate it, right? There's nothing wrong with that. What I want you to notice, and this is one of the key insights that will help you transcend the ego, is this. 
for the most part, you did not consciously choose those preferences, did you? No. They are provided for us by the subconscious mind. As an example, we'll look at romance, sexual attraction. If you think about it, we don't really get to choose who we're attracted to, do we? My experience is we don't. You meet someone, and either you're attracted to them or you're not. That's how it goes. It's not a choice. And I'm sure most of us have had experiences where we were attracted to someone that was really bad for us, for whatever reason. Maybe they encouraged the worst in us. Maybe they were not available, whatever it may be. And wouldn't life be easier if we could all consciously choose who we're attracted to and who we're not attracted to? Of course it would be. But that's not how it goes. What we're attracted to is done for us by the subconscious. We do not get to choose that. And so notice that because we can't choose it, it doesn't make a lot of sense to judge ourselves for what we want or don't want. Now, does it? It's like judging someone for how tall they are. It's like, oh my God, you're only five foot five. You must be a total loser. It's like, what does that mean, right? We don't get to pick that. That's just what happens with your body. And all of our life is like that. The kinds of foods you like. It's not like you were sitting there one day when you were six and said, you know what? I'm going to decide that I love hamburgers. It's not that way. Now, there's maybe a little bit to it. A little bit. So it's not 100% forced on us. But I'd say 99%. So big picture, to have a healthy ego is to allow yourself to have whatever desires, fears, attractions, repulsions you have and not judge them. Because again, those weren't a choice. It's just conditioned thinking based on the past and your various subconscious beliefs. So the first part of being in a healthy relationship to the ego is allowing yourself to want what you want and not want what you don't want. And to not judge yourself too much for it. For example, a lot of people that are gay have enormous self-loathing because they're attracted to someone of the same sex and maybe their parents or their religion or something told them that that's wrong, that they're going to go to hell. And it creates a lot of shame, a lot of guilt, a lot of conflict. Too many of those people end up committing suicide because they don't see any way out. This is why I say don't judge yourself for what you want or don't want. That's not going to help you. The other piece of being in a healthy relationship to your ego is once you know what you want and what you don't want, take action to go to where you want to be, right? That's really simple, but that's part of a healthy ego. You may say, I want to have more money. Great. Go get a second job. Go invest in your business. Go buy some stocks. Go take the best action you can to achieve your goals. So big picture, the ego helps you to decide where you want to be in life and how you want your life to be. And that's part number one. And don't judge yourself, at least do the best you can. And if you are judging yourself, I got lots of tools and processes for that. Check out some of the links below. Come to my live Healathon webinar. I'll demonstrate them, share them with you. You really can eliminate most of those judgments. It takes some work, but you can absolutely do it. Then, once you know what you want, go and get it. Or at least give it your best shot. And so, if some of this seems so simple that you're confused, good, you're getting it. This is, in fact, very simple. All we got to do to start having a healthy relationship to our ego is decide what we want, what we don't want eliminate the judgments as best you can, and then create a plan of action to go get it. If you can do that, that's the first half of being in a healthy relationship to your ego. This is how we take the ego out of the driver's seat and put it in the passenger seat. This is how we let you, and not your ego, run your life. In the next video, we're going to talk about the other half of it, which is how to be in a healthy relationship to the results of your processes. Okay, I made a bunch of money with my business. Now what? Okay, I lost a bunch of money on this investment. Now what? 
And if you can get both parts, you're well on your way to transcending the ego and minimizing, maybe even eliminating suffering from your life. That's all I got for now. This is Brett Michael Phillips signing off, and I will see you again very soon for video number four in this series. Until then, please take care and namaste.